The 2022 Soccer World Cup has been heavily criticized ever since the decision to host it in Qatar has been made. No one ever once asked themselves before whether watching soccer is ethical. Yet this has been a core topic that newspapers, podcasts, and YouTube videos are talking about. Apart from the corruption scandal around Qatar winning the hosting bid, there are plenty of other reasons why people are appalled by the games taking place there. From human rights abuses to the treatment of migrant workers in the course of building the new stadiums, to the discrimination against women and the LGBTQ plus members, and climate concerns. It seems there is nothing that is going quite right during the Soccer World Cup in Qatar. But this is by far not the first, and definitely not the only scandal that is plaguing FIFA. More and more light has been shed on the corruption within this organization, which is exactly what we will be looking at today. Welcome to Rebel Economics and today's video on corruption in FIFA. If you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe. Your support means the world to us, and we appreciate every single one of you. First, let's get one thing out of the way. What does FIFA actually stand for? It's French for International Federation of Association Football. Founded in 1904, so before any of the world wars, it is the international governing body for anything that has to do with football or, well, soccer. Its objectives are for the organization to grow internationally, make soccer accessible for everyone, and to promote integrity and fair play. Ironic, isn't it? Didn't know that corruption could be so intertwined with fair play. FIFA is a huge and hugely important organization. To all those who aren't soccer fans, I get how this can seem a bit of an overstatement. After all, it just regulates the rules of the game. So what's the big deal? But actually, FIFA is not just an organization, it's a huge business. All FIFA tournaments generate revenue from sponsorship. In 2018, FIFA had revenues of over $4.6 billion, resulting in a net positive of $1.2 billion. In addition to this, they have cash reserves of over $2.7 billion. So as in any other business, corruption is frowned upon, at least mostly. FIFA had quite a run of it the past four years. Not only is the Qatar bid highly contested, but so was the previous one, when the World Cup took place in Russia back in 2018, just four years after the illegal annexation of Crimea. Now, you might say, that's politics, why should the FIFA care? Well, because in choosing hosts for the World Cup, it also says something about the acceptance of these countries by the organization. This is pretty much the same as with countries. Many countries have sanctioned Russia after the annexation of Crimea, though definitely not to an extent anywhere close to what we have seen after Russia started the war of aggression against Ukraine. But sanctions and official condemnation set a sign, as does the selection of who hosts the World Cup. And FIFA has now, twice in a row, selected questionable countries. This was obviously not the case because they were unaware of what it meant, but because these countries paid enough to make it worth the trouble. For Russia in 2018, it was a huge victory to have all the national soccer teams flying to their country, having their cities swarmed with soccer fans, and of course, all of the money that they leave behind on hotel stays and food and drinks. Now, when we talk about the bid for where the World Cup will take place, it is a decision that is made far in advance. The process actually started back in 2009, when bids for the tournaments of 2018 and 2022 were accepted. Since only European countries remained in the bids for 2018, it was decided that for 2022, the World Cup would take place outside of Europe. So far, it seems pretty fair. Eventually, in late 2010, Russia and Qatar were elected as hosts, which is when the controversy started to flood the media. Two members of the FIFA Executive Committee had their voting rights suspended, following allegations that they would accept money in exchange for votes. After Qatar's win was announced, more allegations of vote buying arose. Eventually, 11 out of the 22 committee members who voted on the 2018 and 2022 tournaments have been fined, suspended, banned for life, or prosecuted for corruption. 
So that is half of the entire committee where corruption could be proven to a point that action was taken. That does not mean that the remaining 11 were innocent. How much does a vote cost, you ask? 1.5 million dollars, apparently. At least, that is how much Aisa Hayatu from Cameroon and Jacques Anuma from the Ivory Coast got for their votes. But this is just money. There are some way more crazy requests out there. England was one of the countries trying for the 2018 hosting title. Their bid chief, Lord Traceman, was approached by four FIFA committee members asking for favors in exchange for their votes. The most amazing one being by Nicholas Leos from Paraguay, who allegedly asked to be knighted. Under all the media pressure, FIFA asked US attorney Michael J. Garcia to investigate the allegations of corruption, leading to the arrest of seven members for wire fraud, racketeering, and money laundering, and the indictment of another 40. The indictment showed how shell companies were used to pay for votes, with the most expensive ones costing up to $5 million. Eventually, even the FIFA president of the time, Sepp Blader, was made to leave his position in the wake of the corruption scandal. Considering all this, one has to ask how it could get this far. How can such a huge organization with 211 members worldwide, so bigger than the UN, which only has 193 members, be left so unchecked that such a huge scale corruption can even take place? Who is at fault here? Well, the Qataris aren't, nor are the Russians, regarding the bribes. In any company, country, or organization, you have to assume that attempts are made to sway decisions. That is why who the leader is is so important, and secondly, why checks and balances are usually in place. The fact that 11 out of 22 committee members were punished in some way for their part in corruption just goes to show that the selection of executives within FIFA is already corrupt to begin with, making it an endemic issue of the organization. And rather than trying to better themselves, they doubled down on their deal with the devil. In 2018, FIFA changed their code of ethics to remove corruption as one of the enumerated bases of ethical violations. So, essentially saying that where FIFA is concerned, corruption is perfectly acceptable. While other offenses like bribery, misappropriation of funds, and manipulation of competitions are still in the ethics code, FIFA has also introduced a statute of limitations so that offenses could not be pursued after a 10-year period. So the issues with the host body of Qatar really are just the tip of the iceberg. Maybe the next World Cup will be surrounded by fewer scandals, as it will be hosted by Canada, Mexico, and the United States. But there surely are more corruption scandals to come in the future. Thank you so much for watching Rebel Economics. If you enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe, or just keep watching more of our content right now. Thanks again, and see you soon here in Rebel Economics.